Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here, and I'm happy to be joined by first time pro Eddie, aka on his account Spoon today. He has an interesting story. He's a free to play player, and you can see on your screen right now, he's been dominating with a mortar deck that we're gonna review in today's video, hopefully allowing you guys to leave feeling like you can actually play this deck and win it rather than just knowing what the cards are. So I brought on the pro himself. Eddie, what's going on, man? Welcome to the channel. Yo, what's up, Ash? Glad to be here. Um, newcomer on your channel, obviously, and um, well, we'll just hop into the replays, I guess. Yeah, dude, well, before we hop into the replays, I'm not gonna let you get off the hook that fast. Tell us quickly, actually, I'll throw on the first replay here. People can take a look at the deck. But tell right. us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been playing? I know that last season you finished the second highest level 11 in trophies in the United States, which is a, a cool accomplishment as a level 11. You're pretty much a free-to-play player, except for a few exceptions. Do you want to kind of share with the, uh, with the crowd or with the viewers why you've spent a little bit of money on the game before? All right, so the reason I spent a little bit of money on the game was because... I've always thought that with my skill, I would be able to get gems from streams, from events, sponsored by Clash Royale, and I have, such as, um, I've won a lot of streamers bracketed tournaments, and that's helped me get gems towards Grand Challenges, and as well as the King's Cup event, and other events such as those. Yeah, you went to the King's Cup, right, in, uh, in LA? Yeah, I went to the King's Cup in LA, I accompanied Mango, which is a... Yeah. A very um, known player in the community. Yeah, Mango made it to the final eight at King's Cup, and he also made it to the final eight at uh, the Dueler of the Duel thing, the Crown Duel. Right. So yeah, right. he's and a good I, player. Actually, I was his yeah, I was his trainer for both the Crown Duels and the King's Cup. Well, before so we get I'm into this deck, it so far. Yeah, I'm curious, man. Like, what, what, as a trainer, what do you tell a guy like Mango before he goes into those really big, high pressure tournaments? Um, well, the main thing I, I like to tell them was that at the end of the day, just play whatever you're comfortable with because you'll never regret losing with something you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. So how, what goes into the whole training uh, routine for you guys? Like, do you play the night before? Do you pick popular decks that you think he might have trouble with and then play against right. him? Or, you know, what? how do you guys work? I, you, I'm sure you have some secrets maybe, but what can you tell us about the training process? Uh, so first we look into who our opponent would be. In mm -hmm. this case, it was top notch. So I used a lot of siege decks against Mango, and he, you know, he got accustomed to fighting siege decks with his own decks, and it helped him with his confidence in all these events. That's really cool. That's really cool. So you just spend like the the week or the you know as soon as you know the opponent, you just spend and you just basically friendly battle, friendly battle, uh, yeah, different friendly variations. Battle after friendly battle. Yeah. That's really cool. I like I like how the uh, the competitive uh, genre or so of the game has moved in the direction of real life people like t teaming together like you guys and training each other and just trying to get better at the game. And that's something that you guys can do too. You don't have to have like a professional trainer. You can just team up with a buddy and you know whether you're entering just a regular 1k tournament or something like that, you can still practice like that and I think it's actually really beneficial to do so. Uh, so right. tell us a little bit about yourself. Do you Are you normally a Siege player? How did you stumble upon this uh, mortar deck that we're going to be looking at today? You won three Grand Challenges in a row with it, right? Right. I've won many more Grand Challenges, but these are the most recent ones that I've come across. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but obviously a ton yeah, of success um, with it. So why, before we get into the deck and how it works and the mechanics and techniques to make sure that you guys have success with it, Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how you developed the deck or why you think it's good in the meta right now. All right, so how I developed the deck is that I've always created my decks with the philosophy that I just want something that isn't meta, something that nobody is using at the moment. And mm -hmm. at the same time, I want it to be, to be viable and work against the meta. So this deck, for example, it's a it's a cycle deck that's, that's evident right now. And, you know, it has the cheapest cards, such as Skeletons, the Ice Spirit, and you can cycle to your win condition extremely quick. And with the Mortar, what you want to do is lock on to the tower, obviously. And in order to do that, it's extremely hard. So you need an, an, um, a great Elixir advantage and to be able to cycle out your opponent's counters to the Mortar. Okay. Okay, so you... 
uh, were there be any substitutions in the deck before we move on to the next replay where I really want to get into the nitty gritty and I'm going to ask you uh, why you make the decisions that you do in the replays. But before we right. do get there, is there any substitution for people who don't have the log? Would it just be zap spell or oh, maybe? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Definitely zap spell for a log. You know, zap spells has its pros and cons. You know, hitting air, being instantaneous. You know those, and then the log has obviously its own pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, well, why don't we hop into the second replay here and All against right. uh, against Pierre or Pierre. <laughs> And I'm going to press uh, watch, and whenever you're ready, I'll, I'll let it go. Ready? Ready. All right. So I just press play. So tell us first about your starting hand here. You can see you start with a mortar as your fifth card. Now, what would be an ideal starting hand in this deck? An ideal starting hand is what I start with right now, is mm -hmm. just pump up from the beginning and get the cycle going. Beautiful. So as you can see, yeah. I'm not okay. afraid to take damage, such mm -hmm. as those fire spirits, you know? Okay, so, and then you're right into the mortar. So why don't we, you know, just to kind of give a little bit of format to the episode, through this replay, why don't we just focus on your your offense and what you're doing as far as elixir management, and then we'll focus on defense on the next replay. So here, why don't you talk about when you're playing the mortar, like what you're doing, when, first of all, when do you play the mortar? And secondly, uh, what is your protection plan, if you will, for the mortar once you play it? All right, so... You play the mortar once you have a uh, fair elixir lead. So that's why I always like to say um, the perfect starting hand is the elixir pump. And you shouldn't be afraid to take damage so that when you go on offense, you could just hit them with everything you got. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So you can take some chip damage with a deck like this because right. you want to put in those big pushes. And th every time every time you take a little bit of chip damage, think of it as gaining almost, in most cases, a little bit of elixir exactly. too. So exactly. so then you convert on these big mortar when they lock onto the, the crown tower, that's when you can really capitalize. So uh, when don't you play the mortar? Uh, you never want to play the mortar as a starting. You never want to play it right off the bat. You never want to tell your opponent, I am playing a mortar as okay. soon as the battle starts. Okay, so you're looking to, to set up your cycle or to, or specifically to put down a pump early on. That's like your main right. goal and to defend. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, okay, so you figure out what your opponent's kind of doing and you figure out what their counters to your mortar are. You have the pumps on the board. At this point, you're just basically trying to continue to chip away at one, at one tower. Now, if you have the elixir advantage, say you have like a one or two elixir advantage, nothing crazy, but let's say you just defended. Uh, are mm -hmm. you in the position where you're comfortable unloading all of your, the, your remaining elixir to protect your mortar, or do you try to save some, or does it depend on the deck that you're playing against? If I have just a small elixir lead, I try to pump in, so that in the long run, I have an even larger margin in elixir. Okay, so you'll pump even when you have the mortar right on the board. You'll still pump. Uh, yeah, for the most part. If it's like, if it's an enormous elixir lead, then I will yeah. definitely go on the offensive and use the mortar. Okay, cool. And it looks like it's working really well in this in this uh, in this match for you for sure. And this was your twelfth win, so this guy is definitely no schlub or anything, you know? Yeah, he's definitely no no, not yeah. the average player out. Yeah, what do you think about, uh, what do you think the most difficult archetype to play is for a Mortar player? Uh, for a Mortar player, I would say it would be Tank decks, but for my specific Mortar deck, it would be Air. Okay, so Air decks, and how do you handle Air decks? Uh, like any deck, in order to beat Air, I wouldn't be able to beat it without the Elixir Pump, because I need a huge amount of Elixir lead in order to overpower something such as air, which I have little defense towards, but it is possible through, you know, just get the cycle going, keep the pumps going. Relying on that musketeer, with, yeah. Right, that musketeer heavily. Yeah. And you could cycle it back, back to it real quick. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the, that's the one good thing about this being a cycle deck is that, you know, not necessarily, you don't have to necessarily just cycle the mortar. You're also cycling all your cards, really, you know, and you yeah. can get that elixir advantage. You can cycle the pump. You can cycle the musketeer on defense if you're going against a, an air deck. So, uh, you know, so the idea behind this whole deck as right before we put on the third replay here, the just the overall philosophy of the deck. Why don't you just give us in a couple sentences, what are you trying to do with this deck? 
build a solid cycle through punks, get those el elixir advantages, don't be afraid to take damage, and just go all out when you have a massive elixir lead. Okay, all right, I like it. Short, sweet, simple, right? Uh, right. Okay, so let's go. Let's go on to the third replay here. I'm gonna press play in three, two, one, boom. Okay, so here we're going against a tanky deck. So this should be interesting to see how you deal with this. I'm really curious the plays that you make here. So we can see your starting hand right now. You just you decide right. to play the musketeer. Yeah, uh, most some some people that play cycle decks they would like to throw something like an ice spirit to mm -hmm. see what their opponent plays. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a big fan of just throwing away Elixir. So I'll throw a solid troop such as the Musketeer and and see what he plays. Okay. And then you stop that push real easily there. So in, in your mind right now, easy. are you in your mind right now are you trying to get to the Elixir collector? Yeah, I'm just trying to just trying to end this push and trying to get to the Elixir collector. Mhm. Mm so even though he has the mortar in his hand, guys, he's not going to do it. He's going to go elixir collector instead and sell it, help set him up with the elixir advantage down the road. I think that's important to point out. Well, so do you ever use the the mortar defensively uh, against tank decks, like to pull uh, the no, giant I, or to pull a golem? I rarely do, and I'm I'm glad you bring that point up. There's rare occasions where you will use it on defense, such as against an expo or against a barb hut. Mm -hmm. Cards such as those, it gives you a great positive elixir trade. Yeah, because they cost a seven uh, elixir as well. Seven. But, you, but yeah. you're not necessarily using it to pull like a golem or anything like that. Um, if push comes to shove, sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And if, I mean, if it's the only thing you can do, then you have to do it. But for the most part, it's it's not the best choice to use a mortar on defense. Okay. If you had the decision uh, between an elixir pump and a mortar to try to pull a golem, you'd still go mortar though, right? Yeah, definitely mortar. Okay. All right. Just wanted to clarify. <laughs> All right. So here, right now, you still you've only played one mortar so far. Okay. You get the mortar on the board. So now, where's right. your mind at at this point? You My mind is there's this there's this full health knight. In, in front of my mortar that's tanking for it. And now now I've got a massive elixir lead. He has no pump to keep up with my pumps or a counter for it. So then all I have to do is keep spamming keep spamming my mortars and till he exhausts all of his elixir. Because I okay. have a massive elixir lead. And this is actually a pretty difficult matchup to be honest with you like for as a siege player because he has tombstone, battle ram, lightning, and all that tankage, the, the giant. So this is not not necessarily an easy match for you, on paper at least. Yeah, but as you can see, every time he drops his tank, my troops build up. So mm -hmm. all he's doing is just, I guess you would say, he's just slowly, he's slowly working to his own, towards his own death. Yeah, yeah, and you notice that sometimes as when you play a beatdown player or when you play beatdown, you, I think we all know what you're talking about, that feeling of like, wait, every time I drop a tank, they just build up tons of troops, and then it's going to be a huge right. push. Yeah. So what would you say he's doing wrong right now? What he's doing wrong is he's using his giant to directly affect my mortar, where he should put it somewhere in the middle so it distracts it, because the mortar has a blind range where if the tank gets close enough, it won't, it'll ignore the tank and go for whatever else is behind it. Mm -hmm. And then you end it right there with a fireball log. It just you make it look real easy, man. So is this your favorite deck right now for challenges? Definitely, it's my favorite deck. It's an off-meta deck, and you know it's like unique. It. Well, you talked me into becoming a believer. I'm gonna leave it in my third deck slot, and then I'm gonna go play a grand challenge, and I'm gonna message for you sure. and let you know. And I'll put in the comments how I did, and I'll be truthful. I, I always am. Awesome. No, uh, so I hope you will. <laughs> I will. So thanks so much for coming on, man. It was a great time to uh, first time guest, first time pro, and uh, would definitely love to have you back sometime. It's uh, been a pleasure. Definitely, Ash. Um, you know, I'm really honored to be on your channel, as many other pros. And like, as you said, uh, hopefully one day I'll come back. Yeah, absolutely. Any shout outs or anything like that before I let you go, man? Um, just I, I just really like to thank my clan, Eminence. They're real helpful. Um, a lot of them are off meta players such as myself and free to play. So big shout out to you guys. Um, once I get back into the clan, 
you know, nice. we'll get back into all our leagues and everything. Awesome. Well, shout out to Eminence. Do you have social media? Does Eminence have social media? If so, I'll be sure to include them all in the description below for you guys to check out. Yeah, we have social media. I'll make sure to tell you about that, man. Sweet, you can sweet. Them below. All right, all the links will be below, guys. And my shout out is, as always, to Bren Chong for being a partner in my YouTube channel. Make sure you follow him on Twitter and Instagram for daily Clash Royale tournaments. Talking big tournaments, 1K, 10K tournaments. And uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be it from me. Thanks again so, so much here to Eddie. I, it's just been a total pleasure reviewing this awesome mortar deck. And uh, guys, that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. And as always, take care, guys.